Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from the Middle Discourses 61, which is advice to Rahula at Ambalathaka. Right? Uh, the link to the entire discourse is given in the description, so you can read it at your end. Now, basically this discourse consists of Buddha's advice to Rahula. Rahula was a novice monk and uh, Buddha wanted to advise him. He basically uh, made a lie that, you know, someone... Like some people came and asked where is Buddha, they wanted to visit the Buddha and he said that Buddha was someplace else, knowing that he was not at that place, he was at this place. So Buddha wanted to uh, teach uh, 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 Rahula, Rahula was Buddha's son, uh, he wanted to give a teaching to Rahula that this is wrong what you have done. So uh, Rahula was sitting one day in late afternoon and Buddha came to him and when Rahula saw him, and he just uh, made a seat for him and uh, uh, lay, put the water also in a pot so that he can wash his feet. Rahula bowed to the Buddha and then what Buddha did, he washed his feet and he left a little water in the pot and he said Rah to Rahula. Now understand how Buddha is modifying his teaching uh, uh, to suit Rahula's you know, uh, intelligence level. So because he was a novice monk, so Buddha said, this is a small water in the pot. Do you see this? Rahula said, yes. So then Buddha said, this is how little of an ascetic's nature is left in those who are not ashamed to tell a deliberate lie. That means those people who are not ashamed to tell a deliberate lie, this is how little of their nature what is left. Right? That Buddha said. Right? Again, understand the word. It's not only lying. It's intentional lying. It's deliberate lying which is the problem. Even if you talk about the five precepts, that if you're in the Buddhist path, five precepts are no killing, no stealing, no lying, no sexual misconduct and no drinking. So when we talk about lying, we are talking about intentional lying. It's basically deliberate lying. If you know, don't know something to be untrue and you say that, that doesn't constitute. In Buddha's entire teaching, the, the whole theory of karma, the law of karma is based on the intentional act acts and not random acts right Un unintentional acts right okay so buddha so that's why this is coming very clearly that little bit of ascetics nature is left in those who are not ashamed to tell a deliberate lie then what the buddha did he tossed the little water that was left in the pot do you see this little bit of water that was tossed away yes sir rahula said this is how the ascetics nature is tossed away in those who are not Ashamed to tell. That means whatever left is there, that is also tossed away. Then the Buddha turned the pot upside down and said to Rahula, Do you see this pot turned upside down? Rahula said, Yes, sir. That's how the ascetic's nature is turned upside down by those who are not ashamed to tell a deliberate lie. Then Buddha turned the pot right side up and said, Do you know how this pot is vacant and hollow? So Rahula said, Yes. That's how vacant and hollow the ascetic's nature becomes. In those who are not ashamed to tell a deliberate lie. That means those ascetics who tell lies, their nature becomes a, 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 a vacant and hollow. Then he gave this example of a royal bull, elephant and all, where again the same thing he explained. So then Buddha said, uh, 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 gave the analogy for mirror. That what is the purpose of a mirror? So Buddha said, it, uh, so Sarawala said, it was checking, it was checking your reflection, sir. Buddha said, in the same way, deeds of body, speech and mind should be done only after repeated checking. I, re I repeat this line, very important line that Buddha said. Deeds of body, speech and mind should be done only after repeated checking. Right? So, Buddha says, when you want to act with the body, you should check on the same deed. Does it? So, we have to reflect before we do, we, before we act. First of all, what happens is the intention arises and then either the bodily action happens or the action happens through speech. But the first thing what happens is the intention in our mind. So when that intention comes in our mind, so this is basically mindfulness of intentions. Right? So when intention comes that I want to do so and so thing, so Buddha asked us to reflect, does this act with the body that I want to do or it may be speech, right? leads to hurting myself, hurting others or hurting both? Is it unskillful with suffering as its outcome and result? 
because if it's skillful then it will be have a you know it will have a good outcome but it is if it is unskillful for example feedback if feedback is given in anger it will hurt the other person it will be unskillful act of speech right so we have to reflect that first what will be the impact will it hurt others hurt myself or both is it unskillful with suffering as its outcome will the outcome be suffering if while checking this way you know that this act with the body that i want to do leads to hurting myself hurting others it's unskillful with suffering as the outcome to the best of your ability rahula you should not do such a deed that means to the best of our ability we should refrain from doing this deed if we know it's unskillful it will cause hurt but if checking this way you know that this act doesn't lead to hurting myself and it's skillful with happiness as its outcome then rahula you should do such a deed so friends if we evaluate only this para right and i i ask you to go through and read this discourse at your end only this para we will reflect that we 90% i mean no it's not even 90% it's 99% of what actions we do we are not mindful of our actions we, we are not mindful of our intentions actions come later on we are not even mindful of our and this is very subtle the problem is that you today you maybe read this check this discourse and you want to become mindful it will not happen but the mind is like so you know it's the the state ten it's so uh, intertwined with these tendencies that it you know it's very difficult to be mindful of our subtle actions that's why friends need to practice meditation daily basis and what i suggest is vipassana meditation practice med- vipassana daily basis the more i practice vipassana meditation daily basis and elongated time like one hour morning one hour evening we will be able to recognize these subtle intentions that that of causing harm to someone or becoming doing some gossip right spreading ill will these tendencies i will be able to note and second is more and more mindful as i go about my life slowing down slowing down my whatever i do may it be opening or closing the door or walking within my home or doing my work slowing down because only when i slow down then i will be able to be mindful of these subtle things and over time over time with practice you know first it will not be very easy but over time as you practice as you do your meditations regularly then these subtle things we will be able to observe more and more these intentions as they arise in us and then as they manifest through our either speech or or through the body so even if you if you if you hit somebody right the first the intention of anger towards the other person or harming that other person arises in the mind if you you know uh, if you kill a mosquito the first the intention to harm the mosquito comes in the mind so becoming more and more aware of these intentions that arise right so that is what buddha said that see if it is hurtful unhurtful skillful unskillful and then decide whether to do if it's hurtful restrained if it is skillful then do then again buddha said the same thing about acting with the body then so they basically buddha says about threefold awareness right so what what threefold awareness of three things of the intention body and speech intention speech and body three things you need to be and at three points also buddha said we should be aware what what point before acting that means before taking any action the intention that arises while doing any action or while making any speech and after taking any action and or after uh, you know doing after making any speech so at three points we need to reflect before the action while doing the action and after the action at all these three points we should have our awareness now practically how to do so friends is not impossible what we are we are what it's not like 100% we have to do right now what buddha has said but 1% we can do buddha says do 100% but it is 1% we can start doing that is what we have to start doing right from today bring small small awareness on before speaking 
Will it cause harm? Will it cause hurt? Am I speaking with understanding? Have I understood the other person's situation? Will it cause more hurt than good for that person? If not, then we will be strained. This we have to practice. This is the real work, friends. That's why we are so blessed. We are so fortunate to be on Buddha's path. Right? So, okay. So, what we do is that at all these three points, we, we, so before, that means intention-wise, while doing, that means we will be slow in our actions. So, we are able to maintain mindfulness. And after, when we talk about after, then what practical thing what you can do is, and I can also do, because I am not right now doing kind of this kind of a journaling, is something called journaling or a, you know, some journaling at the end of the day. How my day was. Did I adhere to the five precepts? Where did I violate? Did I adhere to the Noble Eightfold Path? Did I do my meditation today? Some form of reflection. Did I say something that hurt some th someone? Right? So some form of journaling kind of a, it's like a kind of a uh, check, a da daily check we can do on our path. So it's not just you become a Buddhist and you become a, you, you become, no, you have to, Buddhist knowledge, Buddhist teaching is actually practical. Right? So every day when I come and reflect, so once, twice, thrice I make the mistake, fourth day, as I journal, I my awareness level is strong that okay, you know, now today I didn't make that same mistake that much. So it's like a self assessment of how my day was. So, friends, what important thing we have to do is that if you really want to practice Buddha's teaching, we have to make Buddha's teaching as the core of our life. And everything, our job, our family, everything, money, and everything is around that. And that is like, it's like, uh, you know, that's the decision. It may take time, it may take years for to come at that decision. But once you make that decision, then the progress will be very, very fast. Right? Okay. So, right. so just to end the basic thing that Buddha says that all the ascetics and Brahmins of the past, future and present who purify, and this is deep, this is very important statement, Buddha says, all the ascetics and Brahmins of the past, future and present, who purify their physical, verbal and mental actions, do so after repeatedly checking. So Rahula, you should train yourself like this. I will purify my physical, verbal and mental actions after repeatedly checking. This is what the Buddha said. Satisfied, Venerable Rahula was happy with what the Buddha said. Right? So, a wonderful discourse of a father giving a teaching to his son and we are so fortunate to be able to come across this discourse and apply to whichever way in our life. Right? So, please do reflect on this, do read the discourse, do share your insights in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya.